it gives me a sense of purpose in taking care of living things. It wasn't supposed to be a, a mental health garden per se, um, but that's very much what it became. And in the community, plant people are amazing people. They get me, I get them. And this is how I grow joy every day. Flowing down. As a person who is perpetually busy, my plants force me to stop. Because if I don't, who's going to take care of them? Find some amazing plant friends that you can totally nerd out and geek out with about plants. And they don't think you're a weirdo because they get it. I have such a love for my people and for my culture. And plants are the perfect vehicle where I get to share my love, not just that I have for plants, but the stories of the people who I speak with. Right when my surgery was done, I came home feeling so much better that the first thing I wanted to do was get in this room and water my plants and fertilize them. The plants motivated me to get back up. Plant friends, it's pub day of growing joy. Bang, bang, grow, YouTube show. I can't believe we're here. I can't believe today is the pub day of growing joy. My first book, it's called Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness and Plants. I cannot put into words the labor of love that this book has taken. It's taken two years to get this into the adorable little package that it is. It even has this cute little ribbon bookmark. The thought of you receiving this book and opening it and reading my words and potentially bettering your plant care practices, your self-care practices is like the most exciting thing and probably the most proud thing I've ever done. I'm, I'm, I'm... Humbled and so excited to share this episode with you today. So if you don't already know, I published a book. It's called Growing Joy, and it's a self-care book about plant care. So all of our favorite plant influencers have published their plant care books, and this is kind of an accompaniment to all of the plant care books already out on bookshelves because it's a self-care book. It's actually a self-improvement book. And the reason why I wrote this book was to share my journey from plant killer to plant lady and all of the moments of awe and joy and calm that plants and caring for them brought into my life, but also to share really easy to implement tips and strategies for how to cultivate more joy in your life with plants. Because Plants can be our most amazing teachers. They can be the single best self-development and wellness tool that we have, but sometimes we have to tune our ears to the frequency of the lessons that they wanna teach us. And this book is jam-packed with ways to get you there. I like to say it's part self-care, part plant care, part memoir, and then mostly plant puns, right? Cause it's me, I wrote the book. So it's filled with plant puns. But even more excited, so this book is pretty much my story of going from plant killer to plant lady and how I used plants to lead a more joyful life and also deal with a lot of uh, mental health issues in the last couple of years. When I was writing the book, I was actually probably in the least joyful period of my life. And the author's note of the book opens with, I wrote this book about joy in the least joyful period of my life. So, you know, if you're looking for plants as a fun wellness tool to just add to your, you know, daily lives as a little icing on the cake, or if you're looking to go a little bit deeper, this book has something in it for you. But it's about my story, right? And I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have this opportunity if it wasn't for this amazing community of plant friends around the world that have rallied around me and the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast and Bloom and Grow Maria Instagram and TikTok and, you know, the whole brand. And so I wanted to take today to share your stories. So you heard in that little compilation ahead of this, a little snippet of what we're about, to, the journey that we're about to go on together. Um, but today is about not just celebrating the launch of this book, but celebrating your stories because because I know that my situation is not unique. I'm, you know, as woo-woo as it gets, and I like to tout, you know, plant life lessons from plants all the time, but I know that there are many people in this community that truly feel like plant care is self-care and that plants can't, you guys know already, you know the power of plants. And this book is meant to help enrich and deepen those practices and that knowing within you that you already have. All of the testimonials that we're gonna hear today about how our community grows joy shows that everybody cares for plants in a different way. And plants mean different things to different people, but they all mean something very powerful. They're all very powerful to us. So a couple of months ago, I put out a call. I said, hey, 
Plant friends, if you wanna share your story with me, I wanna share your story with the world. So today we're gonna to hear from members of our community about how they grow joy in their lives. You're gonna hear about how they use plants to lead a happier life, how they've used plants to heal, how they use plants to connect with others or connect with themselves. And I get out your tissues because I definitely cried <laughs> through a few of these the first time I heard them. And because we are celebrating the pub day of this book, I am going to pepper in some sneak peeks of some of the text of this book and read little snippets throughout this, uh, this woven tapestry of stories that we have for you today. And stay tuned for the end because I will be reading the note from the author where I talk about how I wrote this book in the least joyful period of my life. The irony is not lost on me, but I find that it's probably the most vulnerable I've been with our community. And that's one of the cool things about this book is it's, it's my worldview distilled and it's vulnerable AF. And I can't wait to share myself with you guys in addition to share ways that you guys can better yourself and be happy. So we had so many amazing submissions. So we've grouped them in these little thematic groups. So I will be weaving in and out of this video and podcast episode, introing people and then kind of teeing them up to, to share their stories. I'm going to start by introducing three very special members of our community, Jane, Christy, and Meredith. They all share their stories about how plants have helped them connect, right? Uh, and to tee that up, I'd love to share a little glimmer of the end of my book, page 207, in a chapter called Practice Kindness. In the forest, there is a wood-wide web of mycorrhizal fungi that run underground, connecting the trees in a forest, helping them grow and communicate. These underground fungi, in partnership with beneficial bacteria species, connect trees by attaching to their roots and becoming conduits, allowing these arboreal beings to send each other life-giving resources and even warning signs when there's a potential threat. Mother trees send sugars to shaded seedlings to help them get established. Dying trees dump their resources they can no longer use into the mycorrhizal network as a final gesture of generosity. A forest is not just a collection of isolated trees, but a whole superorganism for us to participate in and learn from. How can we look to forests as inspiration for humanity? Plant people are kind people. Think about it. Of all the hobbies in the world, we choose caring for little potted green aliens that can't communicate with us in our naive language. We heighten our senses and stretch ourselves to understand what these plants need and spend hours learning, researching, and doing our best to help them thrive. It takes a special person to choose to do that with his or her spare time and expendable income. There is a tenderness within ourselves that can be cultivated. We bond with our plant collections, our hearts swell, and we take those feel-good vibes into the world. We share our joy with others through cuttings, advice, and more kindness, and the ripple effect is exciting. Without further ado, here is Jane, Christy, and Meredith. I grow joy by sharing plants. My name is Jane and I've grown up in greenhouses. Whether a mum field, a planting line, a retail nursery, or a bug study, I've been able to rely on plants to just kind of always be around. Plants have taught me that we all grow at different rates and that we all have different growth requirements. They've shown me that it's okay to need support and that some of us grow our best and strongest with it and that our environments truly matter. Plants have comforted me, inspired me, and surprised me over and over. But my favorite part of all is sharing that with someone else. I'm still working at the locally owned and operated greenhouse. So far, I've cataloged our succulent and cactus collection, developed a houseplant line, and started our online store. Beyond just work, though, plants have given me something to talk about, something to be excited and motivated by, and they've made it easier to meet people again, provided they don't mind talking about plants. I may be biased, but I think plant people are the best, and my work has let me meet some of the kindest established plant parents and the most enthusiastic next generation of foliage friends. In helping and learning from how they grow, I've been able to grow my very best. It's been about four years since I first began learning from plants how to grow joy, and I really think the best way is sharing. I love watching plants grow and thrive. Plants bring life and joy to rooms that are otherwise static. And it's just relaxing to be surrounded by greenery, inside or outside. There's just also a calmness and serenity that I find when I'm surrounded by plants that I struggle to find anywhere else. I'm the sort of person that tends to throw themselves from one situation to another, like quite fast, and I find it very hard to sort of stop and slow down and take a minute. 
Being a plant parent forces you to slow down because you have to stop to take care of your plants, to look at them, to observe them, to uh, find out they're okay. Just check in with them. And as I've done that with my plants, I've learned to do that with myself and it's okay to take time. So I've ended up with this planty jungle and I love it. And as I have learned with my plants, I've learned with myself. It's a haven I've created and I will continue to create because it brings me joy. My name is Meredith Thagis Praskin, and this is my favorite plant. It's a scented geranium, and not only is it gorgeous to look at, it smells incredible, but one of the other reasons that I love it so much is that it makes me think of someone very special. It makes me think of Maria, because a cutting of this plant was one of her early plants when she was starting to dream up Bloom and Grow Radio. I'm so proud of you. I have to share a quick short story about Meredith, who was the third participant. Meredith, I used to babysit for when I was in New York City. When I was a performer, my side job before Bloom and Grow was babysitting. And I babysat Meredith's sweet son since he was four months old. She was always an incredible employer of mine. And she's right. I started Bloom and Grow Radio at their kitchen table. Once Graham would go to sleep, I would get on my, the, my computer and Google my way into, you know, editing podcasts and figuring out how to bring Bloom and Grow to the world because I barely knew how to use a computer at the time. And Meredith has always been such a support that rose scented geranium was so important to me. I used to take leaves off and bring them in my audition binder to auditions. So anyway, Meredith is a huge reason why Bloom and Grow Radio is here today for us to enjoy. So thank you, Meredith. And I definitely cried a lot the first time I saw your video. So in addition to connecting with others, a lot of members of our community wrote in talking about how taking care of plants actually helps them connect with their inner child and their inner student. Let's hear next from Samantha, Marie, Miles, and Mark. That's a lot of M's. But before that, I'm so excited to introduce you to a very sweet and treasured member of our community, Erin Albano. Erin and I were actually in Cats on Broadway together. Um, we overlapped very briefly, but actually became very good friends in the pandemic when Aaron went from being a plant killer to a plant person by himself. He found Bloom and Grow, he started binging, and we've had such a fun friendship. Aaron is now touring with the Broadway cast of Hamilton the Musical and bringing his plants on tour the way I brought my plants on tour with Cats in 2019. If you listen to the podcast, you know what that's about. The final chapter of Growing Joy is actually called The Sisterhood of the Traveling Plants, and it literally tracks all of the gifted cuttings that I've given and received in that year of 2019. It's a very special, very special chapter in the book. So without further ado, here's Aaron. Hi. I'm Aaron Albano and I grow joy by traveling plants across the country with me while I'm on tour with Hamilton. I am currently in St. Louis, uh, which is much different than my hometown of New York City, and I've been traveling these seven different plants. I got my jade, my mango, my calamansi that I started from seed about a year and a half ago, my, um, oh gosh, my <laughs> whale fin, my Cebu blue, my, um, my Teneki and my, um, what I call my Frankenstein pothos. Um, I plucked a whole bunch of different pothoses and put them in one pot. Um, planting has been a big, uh, new hobby for me, uh, in the past year and a half. It started during pandemic, but it has been such a joy to watch these grow and sort of, um, adjust my growing and watering and care for them in each different zone we've been in. So it's been really fun. I've loved it. That's how I grow joy. I just wanted to let you know how I use plants to grow joy. Um, I look at my plants every single day and admire how beautiful they are, how special and unique they are, how amazing it is that each one of them has a different shape and pattern and color. It just really is amazing how beautiful nature can be. Watching them grow, feeling success when you cultivate something from a small plant to a large plant and all of the um, successes that you have along the way, new leaves and flowers. Um, and also learn life lessons that sometimes you do your best and the plant doesn't make it. And that's okay, that's just part of life. But it's still so fun and such a special time to get your hands dirty and experiment with plants and play in the dirt and grow things. And 
I don't know what my life would be like without plants and also without Blooming Grove Radio. So thanks guys, keep growing joy. Hey everybody, my name is Mark and I grow joy by taking time every day to learn something new. Being in the plant hobby, there is always something new to find out. There's always something new to learn. There's always someone new to listen to who might have some information you didn't. Uh, the best way to make friends in the plant community I have found is just getting online, striking up a conversation with someone about a plant you're struggling with or helping someone with a plant that they are having issues with. So I guess I would say that I grow joy by growing my friendships, friendships and my knowledge that I have learned and gained from being part of this lovely community. I grow joy by continually learning and reading or watching videos about um, plants, horticulture, gardening. One of my favorite things to do is sit outside in the sun and read a good book about gardening or plants and just continue to learn about care um, and those pesky Latin plant names, all that good stuff. Um, I also love that feeling when you bring a plant home and it um, a new leaf unfurls or it just seems to be generally happy in your care. Um, that definitely sparks joy. I grow joy by providing conditions for my plants to thrive in. Seeing new growth is my favorite way to enjoy this planty hobby. I would say that there are three ways that I grow joy. One is by learning, two is by sharing, and three is by giving. So with learning, I have always had a deep desire to learn as much as possible about as much as possible, to be totally frank, um, like skills, crafts, um, occupations, histories, cultures. I've always been a voracious learner and I've always wanted to learn as much as possible because I think it makes us more empathetic people, one, but also it makes us appreciate crafts and artistry even more. So the second way that I grow joy is by sharing. I love sharing knowledge, my personal experience. I love sharing what I can with whoever will listen. Um, I, I have had a very complicated life, but I feel like most of us have. And, but I, I appreciate being able to share and to be heard by my community. And finally, I grow joy by giving. Um, I, I'm sure you have experienced this if you're listening to this, but the, the pure joy of giving someone a plant from your collection, um, the idea of, of the act of giving something to another human being that appreciates it because they share in your love and your passion and joy for plants and, um, I also really love being able to look around my home and remembering who gifted me each of the plants in my space. Whenever I see the plants and whenever I'm taking care of it, I'm reminded of like that moment in time when I was gifted the plant. I remember the person, I remember like the feeling of joy and happiness and gratitude. And it's just, I think it's really sweet that we have the ability to share so much with one another and um yeah i that's how i grow joy through learning sharing giving i definitely agree with a lot of these members of our community who just chimed in plants for me have been such a fun way to reconnect with that inner student and that inner child i wanted to read a quick snippet of actually the end of the book where i suggest a lot of different resources to continue cultivating your curiosity after you're done with growing joy but here's the call to action that i leave at the end of the book as an adult after you finish school it's easy to let curiosity and your capacity to learn slip away we get set in our ways, our routines, our belief systems, and ride out the rest of our lives less and less open to change. Plant care helps with that. It pushes you, along with your plants, to continue to grow. No matter how many degrees in botany or horticulture you have, there is always a new plant, new growing technique, or theory to learn about. There is always something on your planty to-do list to accomplish. There is always another step to take in deepening your relationship with plants, nature, and yourself. Continue to learn, experiment, ask why, 
You've got your whole life to enjoy this beautiful hobby. Keep going and keep growing. Next, I'd like to highlight some incredible members of our community who shared very vulnerably, very beautiful stories about how plants have helped them heal. So here's Nancy, Pamela, and Willow. Plants bring me so much joy, especially my peperomia here. I propagate them and give them to friends um, and keep a bunch, as you can see. Um, I started doing house plants years ago, but wasn't very good at it. And I got into it more um, after a bicycle accident that I was in about 15 years ago. Uh, and <laughs> they are my therapy. <laughs> um, I, I have a brain injury, so it's hard for me to uh, um, uh, talk right now. But anyway. It's hard for me to coordinate and um, hand-eye coordination isn't good. Um, but these guys, <laughs> they understand. Um, so they, they've just really helped me. Um, and they're, uh, they're just really good. Hey Maria, hey plant friends. I'm gonna show you at the place where I grow most of my joy. So I am sitting in my own personal field of beautiful violets in my beautiful garden where I grow my joy. And this place, it started out as a garbage filled empty lot. And um, it was a few months before my little brother passed away and um, wasn't supposed to be uh, a mental health garden per se, um, but that's very much what it became. So it's been three years since I started this little mental health garden of mine, and I think the most rewarding part about it has been, you can probably hear the birds, um, there's not a lot of trees in my neighborhood, and um, the abundance of birds alone that have come back to the neighborhood because of this garden that I built, you know, that I made, um, is, is just, it's pretty, pretty tough feeling to beat. It's, it's about the greatest thing I think that I've done in my adult life, um, besides raising two beautiful children. So I'm quite proud of it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what I would have done without it. It was just, it was a, a sense of purpose when everything in life felt really chaotic and like everything could just end overnight, you know? So this garden has helped me grow joy for the last three years that have been a lot of uncertainty and every day of the last three years, um, even during the winter, I've had stuff to do for this garden to make it grow, to make it more beautiful every year. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my story about growing joy. Hey friends, how do plants bring me joy? Well. Wow. I am standing in my pretty much brand new sunroom that my father and my uncle built for me. Just at the tail end of last year, right before everything froze, I was able to get my plants in here. At the same time, I was suffering from some pretty excruciating back pain. And it turned out that I had a tumor in my spinal column. I ended up going in for emergency surgery due to a ridiculous amount of pain. Um, I had that tumor removed February 12th of this year. Leading up to that, my plants were pretty neglected. I couldn't lift even enough water in a jug to water them. I had to have help with a lot of things. Um, right when my surgery was done, I came home feeling so much better that the first thing I wanted to do was get in this room and water my plants and fertilize them. The plants motivated me to get back up and to, I, I couldn't wait to get back in here back out to my little 
my little potting station right outside here and start potting some stuff up. Potted him up before I was even really allowed to lift anything. I had to have help. But that is just one example in my life, the most current example in my life right now of why plants bring me joy. I could barely keep it together <laughs> when I when I listen to all three of their videos. They're they're such special women in my community and I thank them for their vulnerability. Um I really struggled with depression over the last couple of years and I write about it deeply in my book. It's more of a mental health issue than a physical issue like these women were were discussing, but plants are so powerful and I just hear from so many members of our community how deep your relationship with plants can go and that's really the the spirit and the essence of this book. Now I'd like to take our attention to several members of our community who have very focused specific interests within the plant realm and they called in sharing how specific aspects of plants and genus of plants and species of plants light them up inside. So here is Michael, Jody, Jamie, and Tina. Howdy, my name is Michael Beck um, and I grow joy by growing flowers. Um, it's still early spring and we've had a bit of adverse weather, so not everything's coming up, but we've got some violets here, some salvia, some cat mint, our liatris are coming in good for summer, mm. roses, just stick that right in there, oh, <laughs> ah well, and yeah, got a whole bunch of things, some nasturtiums kind of come on its way, and before too long my whole backyard is going to be filled with flowers, but yeah, that's the way that I grow joy. I grow joy by farming and gardening. Not only do we grow food for my family, but we also grow food for our animals. And that really does mean so much to me. Nothing brings me back to my roots really more than walking into the garden on a sunny summer morning and seeing all that vegetation. And then in the fall, when it starts getting cold, we bring all the garden goodies in and we can and put it in the pantry. My parents and grandparents worked on this land so many years ago and to follow in their footsteps it really just warms my heart. There's really nothing better than looking across a beautiful field of alfalfa and grass and know that we have feed for our animals all winter. Even on the minus 30 degree days I can go up to the haymow and smell the alfalfa. Yeah, planting and getting my hands in the soil, that's what brings me great joy. Hi, I'm Jamie from Minnesota and I grow joy by growing lithops. Like so many other folks, houseplants caught my attention while stuck at home in 2020. And as I was reading up on various forms, I stumbled upon mesons, which is a group of plants that basically look like rocks and are kind of super boring until they grow the most adorable daisy looking flowers, cutest things you've ever seen. As I read more about them, I learned that they can live incredibly long lives in cultivation. And picturing myself in 50 years with family around explaining the weird state of the world in 2020 when I had first gotten those plants filled me with a hope that was equal parts earnest and silly, which was exactly what I needed at the time. Lithops basically also only do two real things. They split in the spring and they flower in the fall and then in the middle kind of look like they're doing nothing at all. Now that I've gotten the hang of them, I'm pretty confident in my abilities, but nonetheless, it feels like absolute magic every time they do these basic things. And together, the idea of just doing the basic things well over and over again for 50 years or more, together, that just captures my imagination and also grounds me in the most beautiful way. And I find it very, very joyful. I grow joy by growing food. It's an amazing process to watch a seed turn into a seedling, turn into a huge plant that produces these beautiful tomatoes that feed your family, or a flower blossoming and feeding your local pollinators like bees. And it's just so amazing to me that no matter what part of your gardening journey you're in, whether you are a brand new beginner or you've been gardening for decades, there is always something new to learn. And I've really taken that with me in my gardening journey. I learn something new all the time. And um, what I have really loved about my journey is that it gives me a sense of purpose in taking care of living things. And I really hope that others can 
feel that sense of purpose too when they garden themselves. This next group of people totally surprised me in our journey of growing joy. I was expecting to hear about people who have used plants to heal. I was expecting to hear about people who use plants to connect with people. I was not expecting so many people call in and share about how plants have changed their lives so much that they actually changed their careers. We have a collection of members of this community who are so inspired by plants and so impacted by plants that they have now dedicated their lives to helping others experience that same impact, which I can certainly resonate to because I just spent two years writing this dang book about it. So meet some plantrepreneurs of our community, Rose, Chloe, Amy, Raquel, Renee, Chloe, and Bailey. Hi, I'm Rose. I'm currently in Costa Rica, so I can't show you my plants, but what plants did for me is they really helped me through a burnout. I was feeling super low and just doing the little plant tasks really gave me some feeling of like successfulness and having achieved something in that day and since then my collection grew and my plant knowledge grew and now it's my job <laughs> i create content on youtube and instagram and that's how i make some money so plants have completely changed my life and i'm super grateful to them and i love bloom and grow and maria so Mwah! I grow joy by pursuing my planty passions. I used to work in the social service and healthcare field, and now I work at a small nursery in Seattle called Urban Earth Nursery, and I get to geek out with people over plants and their little and big wins, um, like celebrating new growth or you know, being excited that a plant that wasn't doing so hot is now thriving because you tweaked a tiny little thing in its care. Um, and it's just been life changing and like soul feeding <laughs> in a lot of ways to uh, make that career change. And a lot of it is because I was so um, excited to meet fellow plant people in the Bloom and Grow platform and just know that there's so many opportunities in the plant space and that if you find what you um, are excited about, it just makes a huge difference. Hi, my name is Amy Polite and I am the owner of Polite Gardens and I pretty much help older um, or mature gardeners or busy gardeners maintain their gardens and I don't mean like people who want nice flowers, I mean like actual advanced gardeners that can pretty much teach their own garden design course. I help them maintain their garden beds and their, their little sanctuary and so I grow joy by helping them feel reassured that what they've been working on for decades is going to be maintained and also the fact that they get to teach me everything they've learned over the the years plants have brought so much joy into my life not only did they bring joy into my life they brought magic into my life and they actually transformed my entire life before i started working with plants i was a stressed out anxious and depressed environmental educator and then i started creating art with succulents and it completely changed me it quieted my mind it helped me deal with my own anxiety and it opened me back up to the beauty and the wonders and the magic of the world and since that time i created my own business called infinite succulents i wrote a book about creating art with succulents i'm working on my second book right now which is coming out in october of 2022 called everyday plant magic and the plants have really awakened who I truly am. They've awakened the coach in me, the healer in me, the witch in me, the magician in me, and they've brought so much joy and magic into my life. I was inspired as a child by playing in the rainforest. In 2005, all of that inspiration came through in a small shop here in Miami, Florida. Here at the shop, we teach people about plant habitat, lighting, watering cycles, Therefore, people have learned to take care of their babies and be proud of them. I have talked to customers who've had their plans for 15 years and just seeing the joy of sharing that about their babies, uh, it has brought me a lots, lots of uh, satisfaction. Hey, it is Cola B. Talkin, host of the Black in the Garden podcast. And plants have helped me to grow joy in my life in ways that I never even could have imagined. I never would have thought back in 2016 when I first took interest in plants that I would end up hosting a podcast, which is something I wanted to do really badly anyway. I have such a love for my people and for my culture and plants are the perfect vehicle that passion for them 
uh, really has translated into me creating a career for myself, creating a business for myself, where I get to share my love, not just that I have for plants, but the stories of the people who I speak with, talking to people like you, talking to my soil cousins on the Black in the Garden podcast, growing joy, not just in myself, but in others, in all the ways that I engage with plants, whether it be house plants, growing things, growing seeds, having a good time at botanical gardens, whatever the case may be, plants are always a source, source of joy for me. And I am so grateful to be a part of your community. Plants bring me joy by making me feel connected. Um, growing up, I was really close with my grandma and she was an amazing green thumb. She had the most beautiful gardens and the most amazing house plants. Um, my mom and dad, they're farmers, so I grew up with a garden as well and we'd always can our vegetables and we'd eat them all through the winter. So it makes me kind of feel connected to where I came from. Um, and another thing that I really love about plants is the opportunities that it's brought me. Um, I am the biggest, craziest plant girl ever. Um, and through that, I've kind of found that my passion is truly in plants. Um, and so because of that, I, I have my whole career is basically in plants. I work two different plant jobs and I love every single second. Plants have brought me so much happiness and taught me things I never even knew that I was missing. So I'm so happy to have them and they create such joy for me. Fun fact, Bailey, and also her mom is in this uh, podcast episode, but Bailey is the podcast manager of Bloom Girl Radio. So thank you for sharing your story with us, Bailey. I love this community of plant entrepreneurs, and I cannot wait to make sure I'm following all of them on Instagram and watching their businesses grow, and I hope that you do too. Everybody who's participated, if they shared their social media, they will be in the show notes, so make sure to go follow everyone and cultivate some community of your own. Speaking of an amazing community of plant friends, let's hear from Nikki and Steven, who find the most joy from connecting with others in their plant community. How do I grow joy? Well, I think the best way to grow joy when you're collecting plants is to find like-minded people. You know, your family's great and all, but they don't really get it. You know what I mean? So you have to go out and find some amazing plant friends that you can totally nerd out and geek out with about plants. And they don't think you're a weirdo because they get it. That's the best, finding those plant nerds that are just like you. And the second thing is really digging deep on a specific plant and doing everything that you can to grow that plant to its biggest, bestest self. It's such a rewarding feeling when a plant starts to thrive and that you know you've nailed it and you did that. <sighs> so go find yourself some planty friends, grow some joy of your own. I'm going to go talk to some of my plant geek friends. I grow joy by encouraging people, friends, family, uh, new plant parents on Instagram to reach out to me uh, with their excitement and their first time plant parent experiences. I love seeing photos of, uh, you know, someone who thought they were going to kill the first plant that they brought home. And then now suddenly a few weeks later, it's thriving and it's growing a new leaf. I, I love sharing in that excitement, that, that nervousness, that anticipation. Um, it, it reinvigorates my love for plants because I get to experience the first leaf, the first growth over and over again, but also just help build community uh, around plants, which I think is super valuable. So keep sending me photos, keep sending me videos, keep sending me messages. I want to see them. I'm not going to read anything from this chapter of the book because it's kind of long and kind of a tutorial, but I have a whole chapter called Growing Together. And in it, if you're interested in learning more about how to develop plant community, the whole chapter is about different ways that you can develop plant community, whether it's online, in person. I have detailed instructions on how to host your own plant swap and all sorts of kind of inspiration for why connecting with people is as important to connecting with our plants. And now it's time to celebrate how plants can help us connect with ourselves. One of the big standouts of the book, there it's in a huge, <laughs> huge quote box, but I say when I learned to care for plants, I really learned to care for myself. And I know a lot of people say that plant care, self-care is a huge thing people say, but it is so true, plant friends. Man, if you give yourself the space and time to intentionally disconnect from screens, reconnect with plants, you will absolutely be reconnecting with yourself in the space that you create. 
And I talk about that a lot in this book. But who cares about me? Let's hear from this gorgeous collection of plant friends in our community. Marcia, Karen, Otis, Darlene, Amy, Camille, and Connor. And I'll be sharing a little bit more of the book right at the end. I grow joy by making sure that no matter what is going on with my life, I take a few minutes every day to engage with my plants. I absolutely love waking up early in the morning before the rest of the house is awake. I come downstairs where all my plants are. I just simply sit amongst them, have my cup of coffee, and truly give in to the sense of awe and wonder they inspire in me. Gratitude always follows. I have a very busy mind and have always struggled with traditional forms of meditation. So for me, plant care translates into a form of active meditation. It's been amazing for my mental and emotional health. This is what my plants mean to me, is that I can sit and just enjoy them without thinking about anything else. I love to water my plants. I think of nothing else. I carry all my plants to the sink and I water them and it's just mind clearing um, how I interact with them, how I look at how they're growing, if they're healthy. Um, I have grow lights, a lot of them, because I live in Northern Canada. And so it, uh, the grow lights helped get us through the winter. Um, the greenery helps our mental health. Um, I just, I, I use it as a meditation tool. I use my plants as a meditation tool. And I'm a social worker, so I have a lot of um, really heavy stuff to deal with. It's a de-stressor. I water a few plants before I go to bed at night um, just to kind of calm my mind before I go to bed. I First thing I do when I get up in the morning is check on everybody, see how they're doing, do a tour of my, my house. Um, I don't have a lot of... Uh, difficult plants to grow. Nothing is complicated. They have to work in our space. I love getting baby plants and growing them um, at, and watching them grow as they adapt to our space. That's my favorite thing. I propagate a ton. I give away a ton. Um, I'm currently redoing a space in um, the agency where I work, which is working with um, LGBTQ um, youth and emerging adults. And we're creating a calming space and uh, we put in a grow light and we're now filling it with plants so that they can have um, that space to just go and be calm and quiet and um, interact with the plants if they like but enjoy the the calming atmosphere that plants bring i grow joy every time i come into my grow room whether it's to actually tend to the plants or do my schoolwork, which I do over in that corner. And it's so great throughout the course of the day or my studies to take a moment, look over at the plants, soak in their peaceful tranquility. And uh, actually it's really easy to get distracted from what I should be doing, but plants bring me so much joy and happiness and they've made me realize that sometimes you just got to slow down to enjoy the little things in life. Hi plant fam, this is Dee of Darling Green Things and today I want to share with you Miss Spikey, my oldest plant. I've had Miss Spikey since way back in my college days and while she may not be the most beautiful plant in my collection, I do admire her and cherish her because I got her as a wee tiny little two three inch potted plant from Home Depot and look at her now. Um, she's gone through months of neglect, overwatering, underwatering, pests. I mean, she's survived me essentially, and she's still here. And so for me, every time I look at her, she is just a daily reminder of kindness, to be kind to yourself and resilience that, you know, if she can make it through everything she's made it through, so can I. I grow joy by simply being around my plant collection. It is all over our apartment, including the kitchen, in small to large clusters of plants in front of windows and situated under grow lights when supplemental lighting is appropriate. It is just wonderful to be surrounded by greenery and flowers when the flowering plants flower and simply be reminded of the outdoors. It's very relaxing, very soothing very tension relieving. It just makes for an overall happier, 
home. Hi, I'm Camille, and I grow joy with my plants by slowing down. As a person who is perpetually busy, my plants force me to stop. Because if I don't, who's going to take care of them? And in the process of caring for them, I get to just be. And that is how I grow joy with my plants. There's something about walking into a room in a new space filled with foliage, and it just brings you this strong sense of connectedness to the world. And it gives you this sense of vibrancy and life. And, you know, there's been many days where I come home and have just felt this very manufactured reality. And I come home and I take a breath with my, with my plants. And I remember what we're all coming from, who we are living with and how we're even all here. It's, it's, something it's it's a bright spot during my day i'll tell you you know long winters filled with drab and gray and white weather you come home to a pop of vibrant color it, it's just it fills you with joy like nothing else i think you have to experience the contrast in it to really see what it can do for you so I said I was going to read the author's note at the end of this, but I actually just made a game time decision and I'm going to read the introduction instead of the book because these this through line of how we use plants to connect with ourselves, my story of that is in this introduction show. I would love to share a few glimpses of this. I sincerely hope that you maybe pick up a copy of Growing Joy for yourself, gift copies to your plant friends. It's a very giftable, very cute little book, beautiful packaging. I love the little bookmark that it comes with. You can start checking out the reviews. We've had some advanced readers start reviewing it on Goodreads. It's truly my love letter to plants, plant friend, and it really has something in it for everyone from very science-inspired practices to very spiritual-inspired practices. My goal with this book when I wrote it was to make sure that everybody who read it walks away with one thing that they can immediately start implementing to smile more, to feel a little more content, a little more calm, and a little more joyful. So I will leave that with you. The links are in the show notes to get the book. Please check out my website, bloomingirlradio.com slash book, because I also have some live events coming up. I would love to hug you in real life. I would love, 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 love it. I'm so excited to, to hopefully have some more in-person events soon. And with that, I leave you with the introduction of Growing Joy, the Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness and Plants. I've spent the last several years shouting plants praises from every mountaintop or microphone I can get to, and even made a business around helping people successfully care for plants and cultivate more joy in their lives. But guess what? I used to be an epic plant killer. Yep, you heard me right. I, Maria, the author of this book, who've dedicated my life to helping people care for plants, have the longest plant killer criminal record of almost anyone I know. In my plant killer days, nothing was safe in my home. Although I came from a lineage of incredibly talented Italian farmers and gardeners, the gene just seemed to have skipped me. The cycle would begin with me bringing home the prettiest looking plant at the grocery store, hoping it would make my home look like an artfully styled Instagram or Pinterest photo. I treated the plant like another piece of lifeless decor and guiltily watched the poor innocent thing die a slow, pathetic death. After my 20th dead house plant, I gave up. I labeled myself a plant killer and decided to stick with cut flowers instead. I also used to have little to no relationship with myself juggling several minimum wage jobs to support my career as an actress and incessantly dieting and beating myself up over my dress size left very little room for inner work or self-love. Comparing my bank account and career with those of others distracted me from having a loving relationship with myself. Taking pride in how I hustled and pounded the pavement took priority over having actual pride or contentment. To put it simply, when I learned to care for plants, I learned to care for myself. Plants became my greatest teacher. Tightly wound monstera leaves taught me patience, taking days to unfurl, tender bright leaves as I anxiously waited them to open. My African violet spontaneous blooms coached me in the art of surprise and delight. My resilient garden showed me how to weather a storm. My first pothos plant, which refused to die no matter how incorrectly I cared for it, modeled forgiveness. My mother's six foot tall sunflowers tutored me in the practice of blooming unapologetically. 
Vintage houseplant care books from the 60s filled with sage advice connected me to mentors from a generation I'll never know. My Hartley philodendron slow, consistent, almost unnoticeable growth inspired hope when I felt stuck and unable to move. The strawberries on my balcony reminded me of the importance of dormancy and loss with their promise of more blooms in the coming year. Seeds germinating and thus thrusting forth their brave cotyledon filled my heart with anticipation and joy. In my plant killer days, I had little appreciation for or understanding of the fact that plants were living things. I didn't grasp the awesome truth that we had many similarities. These plants, like me, had DNA, were made of thousands of cells, and had the ability to breathe and grow. Most important, they had a fragile life, like mine, that would be lost if uncared for. I view those plant killer years as a season of dormancy. I was unaware of what I was missing, unaware of that innate part of myself that was longing to connect with nature the way previous generations had. Learning to care for plants helped me reclaim my right to be connected with nature and wholly alive, existing with the earth instead of against it. Plants helped me grow into a fuller, more vibrant, more aware version of myself. The joy I received from nurturing them helped me be kinder to myself. As I cared for my plants, moments of connection, empowerment, and joy I never knew were available to me unfurled. In this book, I will share with you the simple practices and stories from my journey to happy plant lady in hopes that you too are awakened and develop a lifelong relationship with plants that keeps you curious, joyful, and thriving. It's growing season, baby. Thank you so much. This book is available online, bookshops, and if you liked me reading to you, the audio book is available on audio. I would love for you to get it. Thank you for being a member of this community. I truly wouldn't be here without you. And before I start crying, I'm going to sign off and say thank you. And I can't wait to hear what you think of this love letter to plants. Growing Joy, the Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness. <laughs> Doom, 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 doom